Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Beyond the Sewing Room, I'm Diane. So today I'm going to share another video on how to make something really easily. So sewing for beginners, I said I'd do a few more videos in this section. So today I'm showing you again how to use up scraps and how to use things that you've already got. So I tend to end up with lots of bits like this, so through work projects and so on, you tend to get ends of fabric like this which you can't make a garment out of because they're not big enough. They're an odd shape because they're from round the edges, but of course we don't want to throw them away because that's wasteful. Now, jersey is brilliant for using up scrap fabrics on things because there's lots of little things that you can make. So in my previous video, I showed you how to make a vest. So a vest doesn't use much fabric because if you've got a big enough piece for a front and a back, then you only need those two pieces and then you can use binding or use it without as I did in my last video. Today we're going to make some underwear so this is really easy so refer back to my previous video on laying out and cutting out on a garment you've already got I'll link that in and it's pretty much the same so what I've done is I've laid on the garment that I wanted to cut around again for the front and the back piece look doesn't use much, small pieces. You do need a jersey or a stretch fabric if you're using it to make underwear because obviously you want them to be comfortable. You also want it to be breathable, so ideally cotton jersey, a breathable fabric because we don't want to be wearing underwear that's made out of like synthetic fibres and it's not going to be very nice. So this is a previous pair that I've made. I did a video on these. So I've used these, I've laid them out and it's a short style, so they're the type that they sit low on your body, but then they come down your leg a little bit. So they're not high up to the tummy, these particular ones, even though they look like they're bigger. Uh, but they're a, sh they're a short style. So that's what I've done. And around the bottom, you don't need any specialist underwear elastic, because it's just twin needle. And I did say I would show how to use the twin needle. So I'm going to be showing you how to do that. So it's done twin needle around the leg. And then I've just used the elastic at the top here and I've used lace at the front on these. On this pair that I'm doing today I'm just going to use the stretch elastic, you do need stretch elastic, there are lots of places online where you can buy this from, I'll link a couple in below and this is what you use around the top to give it that nice finish but as I said you don't need it on the leg and I do find if you use the elastic, the lace elastic on the leg I find it can be a little bit itchy but if you prefer, you can use it here as well. So you lay on your garment the same way that we did the vest and you cut out your pieces. So again, you want to be pinning it down and drawing around it carefully, making sure you move the top layer inwards out of the way as you're doing this. And you'll get two pieces. So I've got my front and I've got my back. So you will have the two pieces for front and back, but you'll also have gusset pieces. So you want to lay on the underside of your garment, so whatever kind of underwear you're copying, you're going to lay it on, cut carefully around the gusset part, so that's this part, like this, and you're going to do this twice, so you need two of these. They don't both have to be in the same scrap fabric, you could just use a plain uh, white cotton jersey or similar for the inside, or a black uh, cotton jersey, anything that goes with the print in your um, your fabric that you're using. So it could be solids, it doesn't really matter, but the one on the inside doesn't have to be that print fabric. And it may look like it's going to be complicated to attach, but it's really not. These are really easy to make. And once you've done a pair, you'll want to do lots and use up all your scraps. And as we did before, you want to make sure that you turn it in a little and see how much you're going to need for your seam allowance. So on something like this, I find it's usually a centimetre or under because we do want to make them quite small. We're going to sew that together and then I'm going to show you how we do around the legs and adding the elastic. When you do add the elastic around the top, you want to make the elastic a little bit smaller. Now this can be a little bit of trial and error. So you might want to do just a test pair before you begin, just to see that they sit comfortably but not too tight but tight enough so that they're snug and they don't want to come down. So you will want to test that out. So you're going to stitch it on loosely to begin with, try them, see how that feels. If you need it a little bit smaller, you may need to just run those stitches off. 
So pull it through, use a large stitch on your test run. So it's just really tacking it to it. And then you're going to test it. And once you know it's snug, then you're going to stitch it on properly and either we'll either zigzag it or overlock it depending on what method you want to use to finish it off. And then we're going to twin needle it all the way around. So we're going to get started now. So cut out your pieces before you begin and then we'll get started. So these are my bits right here. I've used the same fabric as you can see for the gusset pieces. And this is my lace that I'm going to be using. And in case you're interested in this fabric, I've made a dress in this before. That's why I've got this fabric left over. And this is Dashwood Studio Garden Soiree. And this is a cotton jersey, in case you're wondering what that is. So our first job is we're going to sew these two pieces together down these side seams. So you want to put one on top of the other, right sides facing. So we're going to sew down this side seam, depending on how big you've left your allowance for your seam. Mine is just one centimetre. We're going to stitch it with a ballpoint or jersey needle again, because we need to have a stretch needle on when we're sewing this kind of fabric. We're using a stretch stitch. So either a stretch stitch or a zigzag stitch, make your zigzag small and make your stitch length small before you do this. We're going to sew down each side. So you may want to pin it before we begin. And that's what we're going to do first of all. Do this on both sides. Now you want to edge finish down each of your seams that you've done at the side. So I've overlocked mine. You might wish to just zigzag finish yours. Or if it's jersey, you can just leave it as it is because it doesn't really uh, fray. But if you want a neat finish, you can change to a larger zigzag and just zigzag up the side if you haven't got an overlocker. So now we're going to attach the gusset pieces. So now to attach the gusset, it's really quite easy. You find your front piece like this. And then the front piece of your gusset pieces is smaller look than the back. And we're going to sandwich it between it like this. So we put it right sides facing like this. Now depending which way you want it on the inside will depend which way you put that up. I'm going to have mine patterned on the inside. Doesn't really matter which way you have it really. It's entirely up to you. We've got a sandwich between like this and what we're going to do is we're going to pin that in place and that will enclose that seam and those raw edges inside. Pin it all the way down. Now stitch it in place again using your same seam allowance that you allowed when you were cutting out. Now you may want to trim away a little at this point so it's not bulky on the inside. Trim it down to about 6mm. Now flip it over and attach the outer back gusset only at this point. Stitch that in place. Then when you've done that, you're going to want this one, the inside one, to cover it. So what you want to do is, if you pop it on the right way, like this, tuck in that seam allowance, like so. Then get a hold of it from the inside. And we're going to sew that one in place. So now that you're holding it, you know that you've got it the right way. Pin that along, but we're going to need to do this from the inside, so you're pulling it through. So pin it along the same way that you did the front one. But as you can see, it's twisted because this is pulled to the inside. And again, that's going to enclose that seam on the inside. And you're going to want to grade it, so you're going to want to trim a little away as well. I'm going to stitch over that now. Be careful not to catch any of the other pieces of your underwear in with that. 
trim away that excess again so that you've not got all that bulkiness on the inside. Now on the inside they will look like this. So as you can see they're already taking shape. So now you're going to change your twin needle but first of all you need to wind some threads, some matching thread onto an extra bobbin because we need two bobbins on the top or two threads on the top for the twin needle. So the one that you've already got threaded on your bobbin plus an extra one to go up here. So do that first of all. Now I've got my twin needle in so it's a twin stretch needle so you need to make sure it's a twin stretch needle so it's still suitable for your stretch fabric and then we're going to thread up you do it in the same way as you do when you're threading normally it's just that you're putting two threads on the top so I'm putting that on there even though it's not pushed on to wind my bobbin but I just like it there and we're just going to thread it up in the same way so if you take both of them together just thread up your machine as you would normally And then the only difference being when you get to the needle you're threading up both sides. Now you might want to practice this on a bit of scrap before you get started but you want to put it on a straight stitch now not a zigzag and turn in one side of your scrap fabric the amount that you're going to be doing your seam allowance and just practice with this so we're working from the top side of it pin it first of all if that makes you feel more comfortable and what you need to be doing really is you're catching in the edge of that raw fabric in between your twin needle stitching because on the wrong side you do get a nice zigzag finish. So if you haven't got an overlock, this is nice because you get a nice finish. You can still overlock it before you do this if you want to. But you can sort of feel the edge as well with your fingers. And what happens is on the wrong side look you're getting that zigzag effect and on the right side you've got that nice twin needle finish so have a little play around and then we're going to stitch the legs of our underwear so you'll probably want to start from underneath the gusset and cut away some of these bits because they're going to get in the way if you've got bits poking out turn it back and pin it in position where you're going to want it because this will just make it easier for handling. Now you might find that you want to just twin needle the top again. You also might find if you want to feel more secure that if you cut a piece of underwear elastic for the back piece and just put the lace at the front if you wish but you do need to make sure that you make it slightly smaller. So I found like an inch either side works for me and then just stitch a bit at the back here but I'm just going to use this stretch lace on mine because I find that this is enough and these are already quite stretchy so what I do is I lay mine on again you want to leave sort of an inch either side fold it now again this is what works for me you might want to test this try it on sew it on loosely first of all you might find you want to make it a little bit tighter I'll have a little for the join there. So as you can see that's smaller than the actual underwear is. What we're going to do is we're going to find halfway of the front and back and we're going to mark the sides. So we're going to join this together first of all with a zigzag stitch. So we're back on our regular stretch needle now. And then we're going to mark this side with chalk or a pin I'm going to mark the halfway points in the centre front and the centre back so that we've got it in quarters for stretching it to it. So stitch that seam first of all mark it where the side will be and also the centre points could do this with chalk that may not show up on your lace so you might want to do it with a pin and then we're going to put it to our underwear so start with the seam at the side like this make sure you've got that join on the inside I've got a little mark here for my halfway point so that wants to be central 
and then this one wants to go to the side seam and the back. To find my little marks, I've got a tiny little notch here that I did in mine. You may find you need to pull it to it a little bit to make it lie flat. Pin it all the way around and then we're going to stitch that in place. So for mine, I just want a six millimetre seam on this because I want quite a bit of my lace border showing. Now turn it over to the right side, turn your seams downwards like this and on the top you're going to top stitch it on the jersey part all the way around so that your lace border is sticking upwards. And you still want it on a stretch stitch while you're doing this because bear in mind this is going to be stretchy around the top. So a zigzag stitch but a really small one. And here are the finished pair of underwear. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope you found that useful. As you can see, I think these are really easy to make. And once you've made a pair, you'll realise you've got lots of scraps that you can use up in this way. So as I said, you can buy the proper elastic that goes around the top, but I just find that this stretch lace gives just a nice finish. And I find just turning it back with the twin needle on the leg there, they stay in place, they're really comfortable, you don't need any additional elastic. But if you feel more secure that way, do please feel free to add it, but remember you need to make it slightly smaller so that it doesn't hang loosely. That's all from me for today. Please leave a comment below if you found this useful and I'll be back soon with more sewing inspiration. Thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.